Let's get more on our top story, the Istanbul attack on a New Year's nightclub. Let's speak to Greg Barton, who's Professor of Global Islamic Polit Politics at Deakin University in Australia. Greg, good to speak to you. Uh, it's 24 hours, actually, since we last spoke, Greg, and the gunman is still at large. What do we read into that? Presumably, the longer the time passes, the harder it is to find him. That's certainly true. The, the very fact that it's taken so long, even if he would be found in the next few hours, is still remarkable because the fact that he shot his way into the nightclub in the horrible way that he did is not so surprising. We've seen that happen with many attacks around the world. The fact that he was able to get in and out so quickly and, and murder and maim so many in the 10 minutes or so that he was there and then affect his escape is the, is the remarkable thing. That suggests, although he looks like a lone wolf attacker, he may have had backup support and he certainly looks like a shooter who's had combat experience, somebody who knows how to handle an assault rifle with uh, cold-blooded murderous efficiency. And, and that points to, um, you know, perhaps some larger connection behind the attack rather than somebody just being inspired, presumably by ISIS, somebody who perhaps was, was trained and prepared by ISIS. He left his gun behind. Investigators have been examining it. Uh, how useful will that be to security officials? And what else will they be focusing on to, to find him? Well, the first thing they'll be doing is looking for forensic evidence, the DNA, you know, whether it's fingerprints um, or, or just saliva, fragments of skin or hair on the gun, on the discarded clothing apparently that was left behind. Uh, that could be very, very helpful. Uh, but given the professional approach to the attack, it's quite possible that the gunman had planned this all in a, you know, a well-prepared fashion and so hasn't left that evidence behind. Uh, they will also be looking for any sign of chatter between known uh, terror networks, particularly ISIS-related, but could be other groups, uh, and, and some indication of where there may have been some support within Istanbul itself and where he may have gone looking for cover. And, of course, for understandable operational reasons, they won't be talking about that until it's all over. Mm. Interpol and other international security services have offered their help to the Turkish government. How useful uh, can those sort of foreign uh, services be? A lot depends on where this attacker is from. I mean, if he's, if he's from within Turkey and has no international experience, then perhaps not so very helpful. But supposing, as, as seems likely, he's with ISIS and had, had fought in, in Syria and or Iraq and had perhaps travelled in other nations and, and perhaps is not a Turkish national, if that's the case, then the international community's uh, police help is, could be tremendously helpful. I mean, this could be, for example, somebody from Chechnya or somebody from Europe. And... Uh, finding out that identity and getting the help to find out the background and when he came into Turkey and what he was doing and who was helping him, very importantly, can help prevent future attacks. And, Greg, how worried should people be uh, in Istanbul and elsewhere in Turkey about the fact that he is still out there and possibly still in the country? I think there's two things that are worrying here. One is that he may be cornered and, of course, would be dangerous if, if, if so cornered and may kill others. Uh, the second thing is that... Um, not so much that the attack occurred, but that he was able to make his escape suggests a degree of professionalism and perhaps network backup that points to the possibility of other attacks coming uh, further in this new year. And that's, that's very, very worrying. Um, the, the chances of anyone being individually caught up in an attack, of course, still remain very low, even in Istanbul after the attacks of the last 18 months. Um, but you've got to say that it you know, never has the time been so worrying and so disconcerting, given all of the many trials and, and, and problems that Turkey is facing uh, than, than what we are facing in this new year. It's not, not a way that anyone wanted to begin the new year. No. OK, Greg, I appreciate your time and your analysis. Greg Barton there from Deakin University in Australia.